Let's look at legal aspects of nursing. This is critical for a nurse to know what their legal responsibilities are in nursing. Some of the objectives of what we, we want you to be able to accomplish, it's key for you as a nurse to understand the HIPAA law or act. Um, it's the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. This act significantly changed the way that the U.S. healthcare system is delivered and the issues that you as a nurse must be in compliance with. You have legal responsibility as a nurse to understand this and the NCLEX exam oftentimes will ask you some questions relevant to this. You need to be familiar with certain legal words. Negligence is one way a nurse can be sued for improper actions or lack of actions um, that cause harm to a patient. There are standards of care that are um, established by the National Board of Nursing and State Boards of Nursing, as well as every hospital and healthcare setting has their own policies and procedures that you need to be familiar with, um, because that's going to be the level of standard of care that they expect you to provide to your patient. So let's go through a couple um, types of torts. Assault and battery are one type of torts. Uh, assault is the threat of committing a, a harmful uh, force, physical force on a patient. Um, if you, uh, for example, if you don't take these medications, I'll force them down your throat. Um, I know that sounds absurd, but in fact, nurses have been overheard saying those things. In this day and age, when nurses are stressed, they're overworked, they're short-staffed, um, they're working with challenging patients or challenging families, you do lose your patients at some point in time occasionally. Um, hopefully not to this level, um, because the nurse could be sued for assault. For battery, it's a physical touching against a patient's will. So holding a patient's wrist too tight or their chin when you're trying to give them medication. Um, if anything left a bruise, you could in fact be charged with battery. And patients oftentimes are taking blood thinners that make them bruise much easily. So you need to really be considering when you're touching a patient, how, how firmly you're holding a patient or touching a patient. The next one would be false imprisonment. Um, it's the unlawful restraint of a patient against their will. Preventing a patient from leaving a certain area, such as their, their room. Um, if you left a patient without a wheelchair or walker or crutches, you are in fact um, false imprisoning them in their room. They have no way to get out. Um, I know that might seem a little extreme, but you, you really need to think about um, a nurse saying, well, fine, I'll be back, and then not realizing that the patient doesn't have any way to get out of their bedroom. Defamation of character. Um, statements are made by individuals that cause harm to another's reputation. Oftentimes that could be if you're making a statement against a, a, a co-worker or you're making a statement against a boss or you're making a statement against a family or family member. Um, that could be a problem and could be could perceived as defamation of character. Invasion of privacy and confidentiality. Um, this is where the HIPAA law, the HIPAA Act, really comes into play. Um, they're critical legal and medical issues. The patient has a right to expect that their property will be left alone. In addition, you're not above the law if you give out any information about a patient without their consent to a family member, to other health care providers, or to the media. Um, if a patient has not given you signed consent, to share any information about their health care, you are not allowed to do that. This is where HIPAA is most important and most stringent. You cannot be talking about a patient anywhere where someone can overhear you. You can't be talking about a patient in the cafeteria at lunch uh, where someone just passing by could overhear you. Um, you can't be talking about patients in an elevator. Those are the obvious uh, places where people think that they're not being heard. So really keep in mind about um, the confidentiality. And if you're not up on that, then you need to make sure you get up on that. Malpractice, um, this is always the biggest concern for healthcare providers, not just for nurses. Um, you fail to provide proper health care treatment, professional negligence, there's that word again, negligence, that leads to substandard treatment and results in an injury to a patient. Perfect example would be an OBGYN um, who doesn't make a decision to um, do a cesarean if the mother or the baby is in distress. They can be sued for malpractice. They didn't make that decision. So we're going to move on to the next, and it's a scenario that we want to talk about as far as some legal um, possibilities.